Two years after new nutrition guidelines for school lunches were implemented, U.S. lawmakers are considering allowing those rules to be waived for school districts that are losing money on their school lunch programs. Many nutrition experts see that possibility as a giant step backward in the fight against obesity and the fight for children's health. I'm Stephen Morrissey, Managing Editor of the New England Journal of Medicine, and I'm talking with Jennifer Wu Baidol, a pediatric gastroenterologist at Boston Children's Hospital and the Mass General Hospital for Children. Dr. Wu Baidol has co-authored a perspective article on the National School Lunch Program. Dr. Wu Baidol, a recent feature article in the New York Times Magazine explored some of the complicated history of the conflict over school lunch standards. How did this issue become so politically fraught? Well, I think it's important to note the broad reach of the National School Lunch Program. Over 30 million children in over 90% of private and public schools participate in the school lunch program each day. So really, there is a very large opportunity to have a great impact with the improvement in nutrition standards. Some of the points that have been brought up are concerns about plate waste and decreased participation in the school lunch program. However, the current uh, nutrition standards really stand to improve child nutrition development and learning. You mentioned waste, and that's one of the arguments that's been made in favor of these waivers, that kids don't like healthier food and it's thrown away. You do point in your article to some data showing that that's not entirely true, however. Do you think some school districts are doing better than others? And if so, what are they doing differently? So plate waste is a big problem. It's been a major concern for quite some time. Concerns about plate waste extend prior to the implementation of these new nutrition standards. Um, However, a study done in 2014 by researchers at the Harvard School of Public Health really showed that after implementation of new nutrition standards, children actually were eating more vegetables and also more children were eating fruit, and they didn't find any increase in the amount of food wasted by individual students. Right now, there are a lot of positive stories out in the news about school food officials taking important steps to improve the quality and palatability of foods that are out there, but it's too early to tell exactly what the outcome is at a national level in terms of plate waste. Looking at the standards, what are the most important aspects in terms of improving children's health in these new standards? The school lunch program is legally mandated to follow the dietary guidelines for Americans. And so when the dietary guidelines for Americans are updated, the school lunch program often undergoes updates as well. Um, In 2008, when an Institute of Medicine panel of 14 child health experts looked at what school children were eating and compared that to the dietary guidelines from 2005, they found that children were consuming excessive amounts of sugar and fat and had overall high calorie diets that were nutrient poor. They were not consuming adequate amounts of fruits or vegetables. Their vegetable variety was very low with almost a third of their vegetable intake coming from starchy foods like potatoes. And also they were consuming excessive amounts of sodium and fat. And so what the Healthy Hunger-Free Kids Act of 2010 does is really to update the school lunch program to meet the advancements in nutrition science and to match the school lunch program to the dietary guidelines for Americans for 2010. So this includes increasing the amount of fruits and vegetables that are available to students each day. And rather than having an option for a fruit or a vegetable, schools are required to offer both fruits and vegetables and children are required to include at least one of them in their meal selection. They also increase the amount of whole grains. Um, Children had been consuming a large amount of refined grains with the previous school meal programs, Um, so they also um, limit sodium and trans fat. So really it provides an opportunity for children to get a healthier meal at school that provides many of the nutrients that they need. And additionally, the new nutrition standards include not just minimum calorie goals, but also maximum calorie goals. Could the shift have been made more gradually? For instance, many schools some years ago eliminated vending machines that sell sugar-sweetened beverages. Would taking other steps one by one help in terms of shifting children's palates and shifting diets? So these uh, guidelines are being implemented gradually. For example, although the 
implementation began in 2012, only this year were some of the sodium limitations beginning to be implemented. So I think that we want to advance nutrition in schools to a level that meets our current guidelines for all Americans. And so I think that it has taken 10 years to get through this process and that actually the implementation has been at a gradual pace and should move forward with the current policy outline. And is there any early data about these new lunches and whether they're having an effect on children's health? The data that we do have at state levels shows that as states' nutrition policies become stronger, childhood obesity prevalence is lower. And so currently, childhood obesity seems to be at a plateau. And it's possible that this is in part to some of the efforts that have been made at local and state levels. So we'll have a better sense in the upcoming years as to what impact this has had on childhood obesity prevalence. But it absolutely stands to be one of the strongest population level efforts that we can make to improve child health, nutrition, and learning. Finally, where does the waiver proposal currently stand and what's being done to combat it? The waiver is currently included in the House Fiscal Year 2015 Agricultural Appropriations Bill. At this time, federal budget has not yet been passed, and a, Congress did pass a continuing resolution, which will expire on December 11th. So after the continuing resolution expires, appropriations bills will need to be voted on. And at that time, if the House Agricultural Appropriations Bill does move forward in its current form, it is possible that these waivers could be implemented. So I think it's really important for parents and pediatricians and anyone who is invested in child health to really take note of where this stands and to talk to their school officials, their local, state, and federal representatives and let them know that they care about child nutrition and that they support continued implementation of the updated nutrition standards. Thank you, Dr. Wu Baidel.